Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Reformed Church of Saddlebrook. On a beautiful uh, summer morning. Uh, not too hot yet in the sanctuary, so we uh, thank God for that. We're comfortable here. I'd like to um, draw your attention to the announcements in your bulletin. Um, first of all, the uh, church family outing is planned for Saturday, July 23rd at um, Jackal Stadium. A minor League Baseball Stadium. I'm going to ask uh, Thomas to come in and speak a little bit on that. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so, so far we have 27 people signed up. Out of all those people, I have received payment for 13. So we have today and next week, next Sunday, July 3rd, to pay for your tickets. Um, bleacher seats are $8. Box seats, which most people are getting, are $10. So get that to me as soon as you can. I will be here after church. You give me cash or check. Thank you, Tommy. Also, we need help with the coffee hour, uh, the sign-up sheet in the back hallway. Please take a look at it if you can help out. Uh, we do coffee hour throughout the summer, and the room is air-conditioned. So please sign up for coffee hour. Vacation Bible School. It's going to be August 1st through 5th. Wonderful ministry that we do in this town. Um, please spread the word. It's not open to the entire community and even surrounding communities. We always get a great turnout for that. And as I said, it's a wonderful uh, ministry for the children of the area. See, Frank are known for any details of how you can help. We, I'm sure he still needs some help with that as well. Um, clothing drive ongoing, as you all know. Uh, so please uh, clean out your closets for the summer. And are there any other announcements? always a wonderful time, so please mark it on your calendar. Uh, at this time, let's quiet our hearts and prepare to worship the Lord.
Good morning. Good morning. Pastor Christopher, welcome. And uh, it's summer, so it's time for some hymn sing. Uh, we have a lot going on today, so we'll probably just do two. But if you'd like to open your hymnal and request a part of a hymn, that would be great. David, you got one? Okay, what number? Tell me. Okay, number three, holy, holy, holy. Uh, good one. Let's do the uh, let's do two verses, please. Oh, the first two. <laughs> good one. Good one. Very nice. One more. Anybody? Yes, Julie. 147. What is it? All right. This time we'll do two, but we'll do one and four. Number 147, How Great Thou Art.
follow in the bulletin as we read responsibly. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. That we have seen him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. Please be seated. We need God's forgiveness, and He gives it freely. It starts with us acknowledging our sins and asking for His forgiveness and asking for the Holy Spirit's power to repent, to turn from those ways. Let's do that together in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, when we took when we take a look at ourselves, when we look in the, the mirror of your word, we see sin. And not just one, but many. It's our sinful natures, Lord, that keep working on us and keep leading us to disobey you, to not trust you to say hurtful things to others or about others, to judge, to ignore and neglect neighbors, to worship things that aren't you. And we're sorry for this and, and the other sins. We're sorry. You're grieved and we grieve. And we thank you that you had the mercy the wonderful mercy to send your son to pay for these sins. We don't pay for them. We're freed from them. And we, we try to understand and try to comprehend and try to receive it. And we can barely do so. But see, see in our hearts our thankfulness, our thanksgiving, and our wonder at the cross. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take a few moments of silent prayer and reflection. Again, follow in your bulletin. The assurance of forgiveness. Because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. to invite the children forward for a message. <clears throat> All right. 
Hello. And a nice book here. Why don't you, why don't you say the name of it? Yeah, not bad. Pretty good. You want to try? <coughs> That's right. And what is that? Who's it by there? At the bottom, it says by by Dr. Seuss. By Dr. Seuss. Oh, the places you'll go by Dr. Seuss. You should get this book. It's got some good stuff in here. Let's see the places that people can go. Here, I'll just read some here. Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know and you are the guy or girl who decide where to go. And so the rest of the book is he goes to these places. Places of waiting, Places of, there's another one. Oh, the places you'll go, there's fun to be done. There are points to be scored. There are games to be won. And the magical things you can do with that ball will make you a winningest winner of all. All right. Now, this is a great book, and he goes all sorts of places. But guess what? In the Bible, there's a couple of places where it says, no matter where you go, Someone is who is us. Yes, God. that's right. A couple of places we could talk about Psalm one thirty nine, where the voice of the psalm says, "If I go up here, God's here. If I go down here, God's here. Wherever I go, He's with me. I can't, I can't get away from Him." And then, of course, Jesus says, "I'm going to be with you for all time." So your lives are going to bring you on many adventures and journeys, and you've already had these, sometimes trips, sometimes things at school, sometimes on the ball field, like that, or, or whatever sport you play. And I want you to know that you're never alone. All, all the places you'll go, Jesus is going to be with you. He's with you when you go to sleep. He's with you when you're awake. How about that? He's with you when you feel sick. He's with you when you feel good. Everything is covered. Okay? So keep that in mind. Also, this is a fun book. You should read it. Can I say any prayer requests for you today? Yes. I hurt myself. Oh, no. Oh, you went fishing? That's great. Paul, you need some company? Angelina goes fishing, too. A big catfish. Great job. And, tur well, put the turtle back, right? Okay, good. But you hurt yourself, so we want to pray that you feel better. David, any prayer requests for you? Good. A prayer together. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for these children. We thank you for the place they're going to go. And you'll be And we thank you for that. Lord, we ask for your protection and watching over them during the summer, all the young people. They're involved. Yeah. Angelina's hand and uh, the fun time she had yesterday. We give thanks for that. And we ask uh, <clears throat> for your blessing on them and the joy that they bring to us. Thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Let's sing number 337, Nothing But the Blood.
Would you please greet one another with the peace of Christ? Thank you. Turning to God's Word this morning, we uh, looked at a chapter of Hebrews a couple of weeks ago. We want to look at some more chapters in Hebrews. <clears throat> Let's ask for some help. Holy Spirit, be present and free and unbounded in this place so that we may hear and receive and live out this word, plant it richly in our hearts and minds and souls. Amen. In chapter 8, from a couple of weeks ago, we looked at Jesus as the high priest or the mediator of a better covenant. And then we want to take a closer look at what he accomplished through his blood. So I want to give you a couple of samples here, Hebrews chapter 9 and, and uh, also some of chapter 10. So first, in chapter 9, looking at verse 11, But when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, but and not of this creation, but he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer sanctifies those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, will purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. And then skipping ahead to chapter 10. <clears throat> Verse 3, But in these sacrifices there is a reminder of sin year after year, for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you've taken no pleasure. Then I said, See God, I have come to do your will, O God. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first covenant in order to establish the second covenant. And it's by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. It's the word of the Lord. Yes. <clears throat> Many, now many years ago, when I uh, came out of seminary and you're starting to do sermons and, and things like that, of course one of the things you think of is the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Christ, and uh, a whole bunch of stuff about blood. And as a young student minister, as a first minister, it seemed, you know, I'm starting to think of, well, how... How are people going to take all this blood stuff? Because, you know, it could be upsetting. So I have a friend who faints at the sight of blood. So I'm supposed to come into a sanctuary and start talking about blood and blood and blood. Um, so, you know, part of me was kind of hesitant about it to say, to go, you know, certainly not ignore it, but not kind of dive in and talk about blood, 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 as if it were a horror movie. Um, but I was wrong about that. And the more I studied and the more I learned and listened, um, the blood of Christ, as we just sang in the hymn, nothing but the blood of Jesus saves us. But you could see how it would be you know, tempting to say, well, let's leave the, the blood stuff out of this. And unfortunately, I think that's what happens a lot of times in our faith. We like to keep faith, in particularly in the context of church, very safe, very comfortable, and not messy. And any one of us knows blood is messy. And so unfortunately what happens is we make church and we make faith bloodless. And one of the things you, 
absolutely need to understand about this word and this message this morning is, from an ancient perspective, from, the, from God's people's perspective, blood equaled life. You could have organs, but if there's no blood, you're not alive. The other important ancient understanding you need to understand is there was one way to pay for sin, and that was blood. And unfortunately, sometimes it was human blood, but in the religious or in the uh, worship understanding, it was, as you heard in Hebrews, the blood of goats and bulls and things like that. But those two fundamental understandings here in 2016 were very separated from. When we think of forgiveness of sins, we think of a prayer of forgiveness, or we think of saying, I'm sorry. Um, it's, you know, the blood part uh, has been removed, or we've, you know, we've separated from that. And that's unfortunate, because it's by the blood, blood of Christ, we are rescued and saved and made righteous. So one of the things we want to learn and remember this morning is the importance of Jesus' blood. And to not have a bloodless faith, to just kind of go along and say, well, um, you know, I went to church and I did some church activities. There's no blood in that, so to speak. So I want to take a closer look at this and show you some important things. But again, let's look at this scripture. <clears throat> One of the things you heard repeated, both in chapter 9 and chapter 10, is this idea that when people sought forgiveness, as you know, with God's people, um, from the beginning all the way to the first century, there was this thinking that you went in and a sacrifice was performed for you on behalf of you by the priest. And um, one of the you know, one of the things that went along with this was that that was good for about a week. And then you came back and did it again. And then you came back and did it again. Now, from a religious perspective, there should be some routine. There should be some, um, uh, well, routine to this. That's part of discipline. That's part of discipleship. You don't just do it one time. You don't just read the Bible once, for example, and say, well, I, I read the Bible, that's good. So there is some routine to this. But, as we hear in Hebrews, what we start to learn is nothing was being, nothing of any depth was being accomplished by these sacrifices. To the point where it says, these sacrifices do not um, pay for or forgive the sins. Now, these sacrifices were ordered by God in the beginning. And there's another section in here that I, didn't, uh, that I didn't share with you that talks about this first set of covenant, this, this, this idea of sacrifices for sin required by God, but it was intended to be a hint of what was coming or a foretaste as we talk about with communion. And so the, the thinking was that, yes, God had asked that, but once the advent of Christ, once Christ came, then everything changed. That's why it says he abolishes the first in order to establish the second. So all those bulls and goats and all of that is now eclipsed by Christ at the cross. And you heard the, you heard the distinction. It says, he goes in <clears throat> to the holy place, for if the blood of goats, uh, 9.13, for if the blood of goats and bulls with the sprinkling of ashes of a heifer sanctifies those, or they believed, sanctified those who flesh was, is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. How much more? We go from goats and bulls, or even lambs, if you want to go back further, to Christ himself. 
That's the difference. And yes, his blood. And yes, his whole body. See, I have come to do your will. Chapter 10, verse 9. I have come to do your will. He offering the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. So we want to take a close look at the blood of Christ and what it means in three ways. The first is a reminder that we sit here, if you're in Christ, if you believe in Jesus Christ, we sit here righteous before God, not because of anything we've done, not because you've been here for whatever years, but simply because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And not only that, but how costly that is. You think of God's only Son and His shed blood, His death, frees us. Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of that. Sometimes it's easy to say, well, I went to church, I read the Bible, I did some activities, I helped in the food pantry. Please keep doing those things. But none of those things save us in this life or eternally. It's the blood of Christ. It's messy, yes, it's costly. But shouldn't it be? Absolutely. So please, in the first place, remember, you are right, we are right with God at a tremendous, tremendous cost and purchase of blood, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Second, what's important is to remember that it is the great equalizer. If we're we're convinced, if we believe and we trust in that the blood of Christ has saved us, then that puts us all on the same level. Nobody is better. Nobody is worse. We're saved by the blood of the Lamb. It's very tempting when we're engaged in this world to think, I did more. I'm better. That doesn't doesn't work when you get to the blood of the Lamb. It's the great equalizer And it takes away any kind of earning this. Like I said, the world tells us you must earn a new job, a promotion, grades. All of these things have to be earned. And yes, we have to work hard and and those are important things. When it comes to salvation, when it comes to being saved, call on the name of Jesus and we trust that his blood has paid for our sins. Nothing else. Here, even in the context of church, sometimes it's tempting to think, well, I've done so much. God should bless me more. No. He may bless you. In obedience, he looks very, very uh, fondly on. But in terms of salvation, in terms of being made right with him, it's just the blood. It's the great equalizer. And finally, it's the blood that saves. But then Hebrews also talks about that Jesus, not only his blood, but his body is given. He gives his life for us. And therefore, after we are saved by the blood, after we've called on the name of Jesus, and the blood has washed away our sins, what is our response? to hand over our will to him. You heard in Hebrews chapter 10 that you weren't, that God is not so much interested in sin offerings, burnt offerings. You heard the list. All of these offerings that applied to various things, whether it's sin or thanksgiving. And what, what Hebrews is trying to say there, what this letter is trying to say is that it's not the activities Those are external. We hear that in chapter 8, too. It's very easy to play this and and pretend at church and faith. Once we've been covered by the blood of the Lamb, then the response is to give 
our bodies, to give our lives as a thanksgiving. That's the only proper response. By all means, yes, be engaged in ministries, engaged in activities, good. But God's asking for much more. He's asking for our wills, our heart, our souls. And in light of what was given for us to be saved, how can we say no? I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's linear and you just give yourself and it goes great. <laughs> By no means. It's a battle the whole way. But if anything today, please understand, please hear anew or for the first time that our salvation, our righteousness is purchased with such a tremendous cost and value and that our response is, let me live for you, Jesus. You died for me. Let me live for you. Come and live through me, through your spirit. Galatians chapter 2.20, I have been crucified, meaning my will, my desires. I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but he lives through me. There's the freedom. See, what we try to do is we try to be good or even try to be better. And it never works. And it never was going to work. Instead, what we're invited to do, freed by the blood of Christ, we're invited to live in him, through him, with him, the unity of the Holy Spirit. The more we do that, the more we separate it from activities into just living for him. This doesn't mean everybody becomes a minister and a missionary. It means wherever you are, work, church, shop right, wherever you are, you're thinking of him. We're living for him. And watch the freedom of that. Then you're no longer thinking, was I good enough today? Did I have to earn it more today? gone. Live in the freedom of God's grace. Enjoy that freedom. <clears throat> Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this great gift. In, in our terms, in your terms, blood is life. And help us to to be alive in Christ. No more of this pretending. No more of this just putting on a front. No more of this bloodless, costless existence for you. If we're going to be real about the blood of Christ, the blood of your Son... We have to be real about the need for it, meaning our sins, and we're sorry. And we recognize the fullness of forgiveness through him and that freedom. We ask for your Holy Spirit's power in this room and beyond to live for you, to put away our, our dead works and our de the, dead, the death of our sins. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take time to thank God with our tithes and offerings. Let's give thanks. Lord, we lift the offerings up to you. We pray that they are worthy, not through what's in them, but because our Savior, Jesus Christ, will lift them up in his name. Amen. Please be seated. We want to celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. There's an insert in your bulletin. Please join me in reading responsibly. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Supper, which we are about to celebrate, is a feast of remembrance, of communion, and of hope.
By his death, resurrection, and ascension, Christ established a new and eternal covenant of grace and reconciliation that we might be accepted of God and never be forsaken by him. We have come to have communion with the same Christ, who has promised to be with us always, even to the end of the world. In the breaking of the bread, Christ makes himself known to us as the true heavenly bread that strengthens us to life eternal. In the cup of blessing, Christ comes to us as the vine, in whom we must abide if we are to bear fruit. We come to celebrate our hope, believing that this bread and this cup are a pledge and foretaste of the feast of love of which we shall partake when God's kingdom has fully come, when with unveiled face we shall behold Christ, made like Christ in his glory. By Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we have received the life-giving spirit who unites us all in our body. Therefore, we receive this supper in tr true Christian love, mindful of the communion of saints. All those who have confessed their faith in Christ, members of a Christian church, are welcome at this Lord's table. Come, for all things are now ready. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For it is holy and right for us to be. Holy and right it is, and our joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times and in all places, O Lord, our Creator, almighty and everlasting God. You created heaven with all its host, the earth with all its plenty. You've given us life and being and preserve us by your providence. We have shown the fullness of your love in sending your Son, Jesus Christ, the eternal word made flesh for us and for our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty Savior, who has reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O God. With your whole church on earth, with all the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name, saying... Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most righteous God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world in the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of his coming again. We offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. And together we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be to us communion with the body and blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow up in all things into Christ our Lord. As this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup. Grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Frank, the body of Christ broken for you. Julie, the body of Christ broken for you. Gail, the body of Christ broken for you. Evelyn.
Christ broken for you. Herb, the body of Christ broken for you. John, the body of Christ broken for you. Ross, the body of Christ broken for you. Mary, the body of Christ broken for you. Brothers and sisters, the bread which we break is communion with the body of Christ. <coughs> After they had eaten, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he said, This is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. shed for you. John, blood of Christ shed for you. Ross, blood of Christ shed for you. Mary, Brothers and sisters, the cup which we bless is communion with the blood of Christ. Brothers and sisters, since the Lord has now fed us at his table, let us praise God's holy name with heartfelt thanksgiving. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems you from the pit. Who grants you with steadfast love and mercy. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and abounding steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sins. For as the heavens are high above the earth, as far as the east is from the west, and as a father pities his children, who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, and will also give us all things with him. Therefore shall my mouth and heart show forth the praise of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Amen.
I want to take a moment for prayer. Let's pray together. Lord, we turn to you to celebrate, and we turn to you in, in need, in desperate need, and you're present through it all. We thank you for that. Lord, we want to give thanks for uh, Joseph's surgery. Thank you for watching over him. Thank you for the peace you gave. Debbie and Frank and other family members, um, we thank you that uh, your hand was uh, very visible in all of this. Lord, we pray for Winnie, we pray for uh, procedure tomorrow, and uh, just giving her a sense of peace during this time. Lord, we want to lift up Chris, and we give thanks for his service. We pray for protection for him as he protects us. We want to lift up Pauline and her breast cancer, we pray for treatment, and we pray for hope. Lord, we pray for congregation and other things going on in our lives that may not be mentioned. Uh, we also want to pray for this community, Lord. So many people still need to know you. Use us to reach them. And we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our worship with 10,000 Reasons. You've heard this song before. Um, for those of you, if this, you know, this kind of music's not your thing, understood. But please remember, it's praising the Lord. Listen to the words, and uh, let's praise him. Like Pastor said, we sang this last summer, so hopefully you remember. This time, though, we're going to try it with live music instead of a karaoke track. Um, so I just uh, give thanks to God for blessing us with these musicians who learned it in under a week. One, two, three, four. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul Worship his holy Draws near and my time. 
like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Worship your holy name. Lord, I worship your holy name. Brothers and sisters, we are covered by the blood of Christ completely, not partially, not a little bit. We're forgiven completely in and through him. We send you forth free in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>